This slide, uh, or this case, is entitled Cervix Squamous Cell Carcinoma. But let's not believe it. Let's uh, figure it out for ourselves. In fact, let's see if maybe the book is wrong. Well, let's start out with the easy thing. From a pure uh, epithelial point of view, and this is pure epithelium, there's no connective tissue underneath it in this area, we see squamous cells. Well, we could see them here where, where they're focused in at least. Uh, and now we could see that uh, it's slowly starting to focus for us. Here at the base of the squamous mucosa, we could see they are more columnar oriented. And here, as they flatten out towards the top, they're more flat and squamous uh, in appearance. So we have a pure epithelium uh, with no connective tissue underneath it, almost like it was stripped from the uh, overlying uh, connective tissue. And now we are following this little strip of non-keratinized squamous epithelium to the point where it actually is attached to the uh, underlying connective tissue. And the underlying connective tissue has similar nests of squamous cells. Now, if you knew this was a cervix, you would be asking yourself, is this squamous metaplasia in the underlying uh, endocervical glands, or could this be uh, infiltrative squamous cell carcinoma? Well, let's look at the evidence. First of all, there are no normal uh, columnar or glandular epithelial uh, structures in the underlying tissue. That's number one. Often with squamous metaplasia, you can see the squamous cells replacing some of them, or maybe some of them are still there. <clears throat> Another feature that will be even more revealing is if you look closer at the uh, nests of squamous epithelium, you will soon see that there are areas in which there is uh, a necrosis, and last but not least, there are bizarre nuclear forms, like here, like here, like here. And in addition, you could see a mitotic uh, figure there, and possibly here. So this is totally unorganized, but uh, keratin-producing uh, nest of uh, infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma. And that makes a big, big, big difference in the cervix because squamous metaplasia replaces the spaces of the uh, endocervical glands by normal looking squamous cells. But infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma doesn't replace anything. It uh, invades not only glands, but directly into the tissue as well. So this is like really, really, really a good example uh, for all the reasons we just discussed of a very obvious infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma, uh, infiltrating the connective tissue of uh, the cervix. Thank you very much.